All right, so we're on Acts 20. So this is, we're continuing through our Acts series. Um, and it is between verses 17 to 38. Now, let me just explain briefly what it's about. So Paul's on his way. If you remember last week, he passed, sailed past Ephesus. Now, when he sailed past Ephesus, he went to Miletus, and that's where he is right now. Now, he summons the elders of the Ephesus church. Now, they're pastors. Elders are the pastors. He tells them, he summons them to come to him. And then he starts telling them what he's been doing. Ever since he got to Asia, he's been serving the Lord. And he's been warning them as well. Now, he gets, he's been teaching them and proclaiming uh, the gospel, which is repentance towards God and faith in Christ. Now, he tells them that he's going to Jerusalem. Now, as he's, he's telling him this, he's also telling him that in every town he went to, the Spirit has been warning him chains and affliction await him. He does, considers his life of little value. He's more important and more wanting to finish the ministry that Jesus has given him. Now, he continues to preach the kingdom of God. And then he tells them to be alert. He warns them. warns them of things that's going to happen. And we will see that today. There's things that happen from the church. Inside the church. This is inside the church. And then he commits them to God. Because he tells them they're never going to see him again. This is it. He says, this is the last time you won't see me again. You won't see my face. And he tells them, I'm going to commit you to God. Kneels down, prays with them. Now they're sad because of what they hear, of what he tells them. And then they walk him to his ship, and then we'll continue that discussion next week. But point one is from verses 17 to 21, and that is the church leaders must not hesitate to proclaim the repentance to God and faith in Jesus. Now I've got, if you can see it there, we can read together. If not, pull out your Bibles, um, and we'll read together. Now from Miletus... He sent to Ephesus and summoned the elders of the church. When they came to him, he said to them, You know from the first day I set foot in Asia how I was with you the whole time, serving the Lord with all humility, with tears, and during the trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. You know that I did not hesitate to proclaim anything to you that was profitable and to teach you publicly and from house to house. I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as I was explaining before, he summons the elders. Now the elders, there's another name for them as well as overseers, but it's pastors today. They're the ones that look after the church. Now they arrive, and then he tells them what, hap- what he's been doing. And this is what Aleki was talking about. It was his traits, his characteristics, his character. When he came to Asia, humility, he served with tears as well, and it was all uh, with, in Jesus, right? And he kept proclaiming the gospel. He never hesitated to tell them the things that are profitable for them. And he was teaching them in public spaces and home to homes about repentance to God and faith in Jesus. Now, this is how we should be. This is how elders and pastors should be. They live the gospel. Through trials, we serve Jesus in the sight of the church, and we don't hesitate to proclaim the word because it is profitable for us now. Whether we are in public or going from house to house, teaching God's word. Now, when I talk about public, I'm talking outside the house. It could be with your group of friends. It could be your work. You know, Kalashi Aho is another one. So these are the public teachings, even here today. Now, house to house is visitations, like what Veni and Setuata and Ma'afu do. They go visitations. Um, but also family prayers and devotions. I mentioned the, in the notices how important the family devotions are. If we don't teach our children first, repentance, 
then how would they know they're under God's judgment? How would anyone know that they're under God's judgment if we hold back the word of God and we don't proclaim it? See, we proclaim repentance towards God and faith in Jesus. If you got there, James 1, chapter 22, it's on the slides. So James chapter 1, verse 22. If you can see it, let's read it. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So when you, you don't just hear, do it. If the word is telling you to proclaim repentance, do it. Let them know. Not everyone knows what repentance is. Not everyone knows the judgments that are coming. But you do. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, if we can see it, let's read together. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and teaching. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See, not only are we doers of the word, but we also live according to the scriptures. The scriptures we have, again, is useful in everything, in everything that, is, that we need today. We encourage our families. We encourage your children, your brothers and your sisters, your friends. Encourage them about repentance towards God and their faith to put it in Christ and not put it in faith of what's out there in the world because that, there's no real solid foundation for those type of faiths out there. Now, point two is verse 22 to 31, and that is the leaders must guard the flock of Christ from those who distort the truth of the scriptures. Now we can see that. Let's read together. And now I am on my way to Jerusalem, compelled by the Spirit, not knowing what I will encounter there, except that in every town the Holy Spirit warns me that chains and afflictions are waiting for me. But I consider my life of no value to myself, my purpose is to finish my course and the ministry I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of God's grace. And now I know that none of you among whom I went about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, because I did not avoid declaring to you the whole plan of God. Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed to you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in and among you, not sparing the flock. Men will rise up even from your own number and distort the truth to lure the disciples into following them. Therefore, be on alert, remembering that night and day for three years, I never stopped warning each one of you with tears. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So again, Paul tells, these are, he's telling these the elders of Ephesus, the pastors, that he's on his way to Jerusalem, compelled by the Spirit. But he doesn't know what he's going to encounter there. But one thing he does know for sure is that every town he's been going to, chains and affliction await him. Now, Paul doesn't, again, he, doesn't con he considers his life of little value. It's more important to him to finish the ministry that Jesus gave him, which is what? Which is to testify to the gospel of God's grace. Now, Paul then tells the elders they will no longer see his face and that he is innocent of their blood because he did not avoid telling them the whole plan of God. He kept telling them. This is the plan of God. Repent. Be saved. That's why he's innocent. And then he warns them. Be alert, not only for yourselves, but also for the church in which the Holy Spirit appointed them and the church that Jesus purchased with his own blood. He knows that there's wolves, these are unbelievers, that will ravage the flock. But also men in the church will rise and distort the truth. Now, he's talking to pastors. He says, even among your own number, they're going to rise up and they're going to twist and distort the truth. Three years, he warned them. For three years, he's been warning them day and night to be alert. Now, the ministry that Christ gives us is very important. 
We testify to God's gospel of grace, but we also warn today that the ministry we're in, it comes with afflictions. And we know God's plans through Christ. So we know that we are surrounded by wolves just waiting, waiting to ravage the flock. If the leaders do not stand firm in the word, how can the church then stand firm? How would they know? Now, what are some truths that these elders can distort? I've got it there. Big one, head covering. 1 Corinthians 11. Not many want to listen to this. Not many want to follow this. This is from Paul, an apostle chosen by Christ himself. He's teaching. They don't want to do it. They don't want to follow it. So they'll rise up and distort. And we know it today. We know it today. Many people cannot accept this. The next one, we have women pastors and preachers. This is our poor te Paul's teachings. And the church today, a lot of ministers today, they don't accept it. So, again, rise and distort. Even the next one there, underneath it, Ephesians chapter 5, is husbands and wives, roles in a marriage. So a lot of husbands, they want to be the king. They just sit there and do nothing. Until they want something, then they'll go do it. The women, a lot of times, they want to be the leader. Very hard to find submission to their, other, to their husbands. They want to be the, the one that tells them what to do and everything else. Control the whole lot. Paul's teaching. Submit, wives, submit. Husbands, love your wives. This, very hard today. And we know that in a lot of Tongan context. A lot of other churches, the men are all other in the Faikawa. And the women are running the church. Different. Distorted. See, we must encourage our leaders to stand firm in the scriptures. For the flock. Not only for ourselves, but also for the church. We must be alert and also warn our families. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run away. Stand firm in Jesus. You know those Bruce Lee movies like that? Come. You want to distort the scriptures? I'm going to stand firm in Christ. That's who I rely on. And that's where I get everything I need to know from the scriptures. Our leaders must stand firm in the word. Jesus purchased this church with his blood. Don't run, leaders. Don't twist the word. Speak it faithfully. Now the last point is from verses 32 to 38. And that is committing the church to God and his word to be giving and prayerful. Uh, if you can see that, let's read it together. And now I commit to you, God, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give, give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that I work with my own hands to support myself and those who are with me. In every way, I've shown you that it is necessary to help the weak by laboring like this and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, because he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. After he said this, he knelt down and prayed with all of them. There were many tears shed by everyone. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving most of all over his statement that they would never see his face again, and they accompanied him to the ship. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul has done everything humanely possible, everything he could do for them. Now he gives them to God. I commit you to God and to his word, the scriptures, which can build us up, build the church up to receive the inheritance that's promised. Now, Paul affirms he didn't covet. Now, for those that don't know what covet is, it's desire. He didn't cover anyone's gold, silver, or clothing. He didn't desire that stuff. Instead, he worked with his own hands, not only to provide for himself, but also the people that was with him. 
as an example he set for them to follow. Points them to Jesus to remembering the weak. Now, he says here, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, these words are not exactly in the gospel. But I have the next slide there is John chapter 1, chapter 21, verse 25, that not all things Jesus did are written down. Because if they were, there would not be enough books. There would not be enough. But I take, I believe Paul. The reason why I believe Paul is because he is the apostle to the Gentiles. I believe Paul because Jesus is the one that chose him. So if it says that he said, remember what Jesus said? How am I going to remember it? It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, after saying these things, he prays with them. Before he leaves, before they leave. He kneels down and prays. And most of them are sad because they won't see him again. Now they take him to his ship. Now just like Paul, everything that is done here in the church is to point all to Christ. It's not to point to us as the pastors. It's not, it's not to point to us. It's all pointing to Jesus. And we commit the church to God and to his word. This is why when we do your Bible readings every day and you pray, the Lord who fears that, that are run seven days a week, English on Monday, and the tongue is from Tuesday to Sunday. We commit everyone to God and his word because it can build us up to receive the inheritance that's promised in Jesus. Now, if we desire worldly wealth, then we have not yet wholeheartedly committed ourselves to God. See, Paul walked with his own hands. He worked with his own hands to provide for himself and those that were with him in order not to burden the church, but to be an example that they should remember the weak and that giving is better than receiving. See, there are a few things that we can give to serve our church, like our time. Right? We can give 40 minutes to our Lord who fear. We can give time to come early or stay behind fellowship and worship with the church. I mean, unless you're working like straight our way, then understandable. But the time you give up is what is important to you because you want to celebrate and you want to worship with God. Our Act 6, our Act 6, we need volunteers. Are you willing to sacrifice your time to come and help that? Our tithing. Our tithing is an important one. See, we do these things always, and we do it with prayer. We pray about it. Now, prayer is a very important thing because we don't know when you'll see someone again the next day. See, today, it's a blessing that I can see some of the faces I've seen last week. But I have no guarantee I'll see them next week. We had the example with Onyahi. We seen him one Sunday, then we didn't see him the next. A lot. And this is what they were really sad about, not seeing Paul again. See the relationship he built with them? It was a loving one. They really cared for Paul, and Paul really cared for them. When your leaders, the leaders of the church, ask how you're doing, they really care. They're not trying to get in your business. They really care about where you're going. They don't come to your house because they want food, or they want money, or they want glory. They come because they genuinely care. That's the relationship we build. That's why when we finish church, we hang around and we fellowship together. We build a relationship. The leaders really want to build relationships with a lot of our church members. But we understand that some may not. Why? Because the person they are here in front of us may not be the person they are at home. Maybe that's why. They show us they, they want to come here to church, but really behind closed doors, totally different person. We understand that. 
but the leaders here, they want to build a relationship with you. So when they check on how you're doing, don't lie to them, just tell them the truth. Say, look, I've been struggling with either reading my word or what not. But they're not looking to get into your business. They really want to help you get to where we all want to go, which is to the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Now, let me just sum this up for you. The leaders of the church you must not hesitate to proclaim repentance to God and faith in Jesus. You, you, we must do it at home as well. Now, we may be the difference between someone giving their life to Christ or not. The leaders must also guard the flock of Christ that was purchased by his blood. But also know that there will be men, even here, they may rise up and distort the truth. We pray for them. That's why we get that's why prayer is so important. For God to protect us, to protect the leaders, so they don't go off and do their own thing. We don't run, we stand our ground in the word. But also, commit ourselves to God and his word. To be giving, give. Your time maybe, tithing and all these things. Give your time when you come from home from work. Pray with them, your children. If not, your siblings come from school, pray. Give that time up. Let us serve Jesus and the church together. Amen.